So UCLA is a public university, a land grant institution. Uh, so we, by an act of uh, the federal government, uh, UCLA and the state of California was able to sell land, raise money and fund uh, public higher education. And that land uh, was taken from uh, people, um, including the Gabrielina Tongva peoples, uh, the traditional land caretakers of the land uh, that Los Angeles Basin and the UCLA are on. And so we pay our respects uh, to them at the beginning of most of our convenings and webinars. So the mission of the UCLA Institute of Transportation Studies is to support advanced cutting edge research, the highest quality education, and meaningful and influential civil and civic engagement on the many tr pressing transportation issues facing our cities, state, nation, and the world today. Um, and, and we do this in a couple of ways. Um, we have uh, our research, we renowned for policy and planning research in California and across the US. And in, in doing this research, we employ 30 plus students per year. Um, and we have a resume drop for students who are here to uh, drop their resume when they get here and work with us. I'll have more on that. Uh, we also have educational programs and events. So we have major events such as the UCLA Arrowhead Symposium, uh, which we just concluded last week with a social event, on-campus events, um, lecture series, Fed talks, which are more research uh, oriented collaborative talks, fun stuff. So we do have uh, field trips and, and some fun. And then uh, service, so advising California local and regional governments on transportation planning and policy issues and uh, research and consultation for uh, nonprofit and public sector uh, clients on problems uh, that are of importance uh, uh, to the public in California. And so what we produce, uh, Director Brian Taylor, who uh, should be joining soon, um, likes to say that we produce ideas and students with ideas. So the ideas are research um, and dissemination of ideas through external engagement. Um, and so we do that through events, media relations. Uh, we do a lot of interactions with journalists and uh, have a lot of quotes in the press. Maybe that's how you found out about us. And then service with public agencies, either um, serving on advisory committees, um, giving invited testimony, uh, et cetera, uh, to translate ideas from the academy into practice. And then uh, the students with ideas, these are mostly graduate students who graduate with and degrees that have concentrations in transportation planning and policy. Um, the, our students are among the best in the country, uh, both subjectively and objectively, I think according to various measures. And we have 700 plus alumni with concentrations in LA in the Bay Area. Um, so this is just a look at some of the events we have. If you are a, uh, a transportation geek, you may have heard of transportation camp. And uh, UCLA has hosted two of these. I recognize some of the names in the audience of people who have had attended uh, previous those camps. Uh, our Arrowhead Symposium with a link at www.uclaarrowheadsymposium.org is our premier annual event. And in this era of COVID, it has been um, uh, archived and broadcast as, as we will broadcast this webinar. Uh, for anybody to see. And if you are already a planner, um, which most of you may be aspiring planners, uh, it's um, available for AICP CM credits. And so at these events, we are both communicating ideas, but also um, strengthening our connections to practice with the attendees, um, with the speakers who, who can represent a number of organizations involved in transportation, sustainability, equity, uh, management planning, operations, et cetera, in California and the United States. And so, um, especially from the outside, but also from the inside of the university, the role of a research center is um, sometimes difficult to to understand, and when something's difficult to understand, sometimes a graphic can 
help uh, communicate that. So in the university, we have academic departments where faculty are based that students apply to and, um, and uh, participate in the degree programs of. We also have research centers and institutes, which are most often working across various academic departments on specific problems that um, overlap multiple academic domains. And this is one of the ways that a research university can try to break down some silos uh, between departments, although I'll say some silos sometimes exist between problem areas. And so the Institute of Transportation Studies is a research center that works across the de academic departments of urban planning, Institute of Environment and Sustainability, public policy, public health, civil and environmental engineering, management, uh, law, a, a few others that wouldn't fit on here, on problems related to transportation. Uh, it's fairly straightforward. It's in our name. We're a study transportation and we're an institute. Uh, other related centers that we work with, um, because transportation is related to problems of the environment, uh, where the Luskin Center for Innovation uh, has a lot of their activities. They're a center that um, has a lot of work on environmental justice, climate justice, climate adaptation, in addition to other areas such as water. Uh, the Lewis Center for Regional Policy Studies, which has a Southern California focus, uh, is thinking about housing, access to opportunity in the regional economy. And then also the Sustainable Los Angeles Grand Challenges uh, Program, which is another campus-wide initiative. So in introducing um, all of that, uh, I do want to dig in a little bit more to what your opportunities would be to come to UCLA and study transportation and potentially work uh, with the Institute of Transportation Studies or take uh, the uh, undergraduate and graduate courses that are taught by our faculty who are affiliated with the university or with the Institute of Transportation Studies. So your options are uh, the Masters of Urban Regional Planning, PhD in Urban Planning, Masters of Public Policy, uh, a new Masters of Science in Civil Engineering with Transportation Concentration, a PhD in Civil Engineering, a PhD in Environment and Sustainability, and then two uh, bachelors, a Bachelors of Science in Civil Engineering with a Transportation Concentration, and a BA in Public Affairs. So we'll dig into um, each of those a little bit more. The, the largest of these programs in terms of the transportation cohort is uh, historically has been and continues to be the Master of Urban and Regional Planning. Um, so there is a formal transportation policy and planning area of concentration uh, that prepares graduates to be practicing urban planners. This is a two-year program uh, that has three uh, courses per quarter. Uh, it's 72 units, it requires an internship or 300 hours of field work, um, and it requires that students complete a capstone, uh, either an individual client project uh, with an outside client, and we'll talk a little bit more about that later, or a group comprehensive project where somebody's working on a team on a complex public problem. And there are some dual degree options uh, with other schools. Uh, and I'll say this uh, now and perhaps a couple times in the webinar, but the Institute of Transportation Studies does not admit students to UCLA. Uh, that is done by the academic departments. Um, in this case, that is the Department of Urban Planning within the Luskin School of Public Affairs. And okay. And so at this point, uh, we do have a current urban planning student uh, that I'd like to invite to come on and share uh, why she chose UCLA Urban Planning. Yeah, hi, I'm Natalie. Um, Juan, I'm not able to uh, put my video on. Um, I think just technical difficulties. Uh, but um, yeah, I'm currently a second year in the Masters of Urban Planning program at UCLA. Uh, Juan was actually one of the first uh, people I spoke to when I was trying to decide uh, which graduate program was right for me. Um, and I think what really uh, stood out to me about UCLA uh, was just the many opportunities for research, uh, particularly the great focus on equity, um, getting to learn about uh, Professor Anastasia and Evelyn's uh, work 
on uh, particularly on how different the different needs of uh, populations such as older adult women um, have in accessing uh, services and moving around the city really interests me. Um, and through my time at UCLA, I've gotten uh, a lot of chances to get involved in their research. Last year, I was working with the uh, Lewis Center, uh, getting to work on um, evaluating what different vulnerable groups uh, needs are across LA and traveling. That is uh, black uh, individuals, uh, women of color, uh, low-income families. Um, and this year I've been getting to work with the ITS Center on projects around how transit is funded, um, uh, especially how we can, uh, looking at how state funding can be better used uh, to uh, fulfill state goals uh, in, in terms of climate and equity uh, for transportation. Um, so in general, yeah, it's been, uh, I, I think UCLA, especially ITS, has a lot of opportunities to get involved with different aspects of transportation research. Uh, another aspect that really stood out to me about UCLA uh, was um, student groups and the diversity. Um, so through my time here, I've been able to be part of PCSC, which stands for uh, Planners of Color for Social Equity, and WTS, um, uh, Women uh, Transportation. Uh, uh, it's Women Transportation. Um, so through both groups, um, I've gotten to, uh, and just in general, uh, the type of students that come pursue their master's in room planning um, have very different backgrounds. There's people that are in the middle of their careers um, with previous transportation experience. Uh, there's people just out of undergrad or with non-traditional educational backgrounds. Um, and I think that really enriches um, the learning environment at UCLA. Um, and also another great part, uh, it's really, I do think this program is great at um, providing a good background in terms of policy, uh, but also technical skills. Um, there's a lot of uh, classes that teach about how to do uh, spatial analysis uh, through both Python um, and other JS um, products, um, as well as like um, other data analysis that's a little more complicated uh, that I think uh, can be helpful. Um, for different uh, career paths, depending on what you're considering. Um, and yeah, that's a little bit, I guess, about what I'm doing here uh, and some of the great opportunities uh, at UCLA. Well, thank you, uh, Natalie, uh, for, that, for that overview. Uh, I know you have to run, uh, but we uh, wanted to share at least a uh, perspective of one current student in the urban planning program. Um, so an additional academic degree, uh, we have uh, probably the second uh, greatest number of students right now, although this is changing, is the PhD in urban planning um, with major fields, including transportation policy and transportation land use and urban forum. And this prepares students for teaching and research or advanced practice. Uh, there are four to six years to completion um, and a dissertation is required. And admitted students typically have a graduate degree and the acceptance rate uh, is, is quite low. Again, uh, consult the Department of Urban Planning and the Luskin School of Public Affairs and your prospective advisor if you're interested in this program. A third program um, is the Masters of Public Policy, um, which will, allow you to take a transportation policy course of study. Um, this is again a two-year program like the MERP. It's also in the Luskin School of Public Affairs. It requires 400 hours of an internship and um, there are dual degrees with management uh, and MD, uh, Masters of Public Health and a Masters of Social Work. And for admission to this program, you can contact the Department of Public Policy in the Luskin School of Public Affairs. And all of these uh, links to the departments are available on our prospective students webpage. A uh, newer program, uh, which began with a transportation engineering area of study uh, this past year, is uh, the Masters of Science in Civil Engineering. And um, there are uh, 36 units required to complete this. So this is a one-year program. Um, engineering, uh, for those of you who are considering uh, multiple programs, tends to require more advanced uh, mathematics skills uh, than urban planning and public policy. So in this case, 
uh, calculus, linear algebra, and differential equations and introductory traffic engineering uh, are, are required um, for the program. And the Department of Civil and Environmental Engineering is the admitting department for this program. Uh, we have a faculty member on the line uh, who will be on later to ask answer any questions you have about this program and the PhD in civil engineering uh, with a transportation faculty member, which is another option within civil engineering. Again, this prepares students for advanced practice or teaching or, or research in transportation engineering and is a four uh, plus year program. Uh, many of the applicants for this program will have an existing uh, master's degree in civil engineering uh, that, that, that is uh, not a requirement. Um, another PhD program for those interested in teaching research and advanced practice, uh, particularly with a focus on environmental sustainability or environmental justice is the PhD in environmental and sustainability. This is a five year program that allows students to have two primary advisors in different academic departments. So it is an interdisciplinary program by nature and, um, and pursue an individualized course of study that includes transportation courses um, in the civil engineering and urban planning programs. And the Institute of the Environment and Sustainability is the um, admitting uh, department for that program. Um, for those of you uh, who are considering undergraduate studies, so either as a transfer or, or a new applicant to UCLA, um, there is a Bachelor of Arts in Public Affairs that will allow you to have access to courses in urban planning, which include transportation themes. Um, the Undergraduate Programs Office in the Luskin School of Public Affairs is the uh, point of contact for that program. And the Bachelors of Science in Civil Engineering um, prepare students for entry-level transportation engineering programs. This is a four-year program. Um, the Samueli School of Engineering has specific admissions requirements. Um, and you can apply as an incoming student or as a transfer or change of major uh, once you are at UCLA. And so I will put a link in the chat to additional information on each of these uh, programs. So you'll be able to click the links to find all of the information on the program of greatest interest to you. And so um, what makes these programs is really the, the faculty who do teaching and research. Um, and so in urban planning, those core transportation faculty who are teaching the transportation courses are uh, Everlyn Blumenberg, who works on poverty, inequality, and transportation, Adam Millard Ball, who works on transportation and the environment and data science, Brian Taylor, who is the director of the Institute of Transportation Studies and works on public transit, transportation finance and economics. Donald Shoup, um, one of our more famous professors because of his long standing devotion uh, to the field of parking, um, also land use economics. Michael Manville, who also studies parking, housing and congestion pricing. And Anastasia Lukaitu Sedaris, who studies transportation and urban design. And in the Department of Civil and Environmental Engineering in the School of Engineering, we have Joshi Ma, uh, who studies transportation modeling and intelligent transportation systems. Uh, Joshi is on the webinar, and when we get into questions and answers, may be able to address um, some of the specific questions you have. And uh, we have two new incoming faculty, uh, Tiara Bills, who will have a dual appointment with public policy. Um, and is will be in the and the um, civil and environmental engineering program, and uh, her focus is transportation equity and travel travel behavior. And then uh, Reagan Patterson will be joining as an assistant professor in civil and environmental engineering, and her focus is transportation equity and justice and environmental justice. Also in the civil and environmental engineering department, 
and working on transportation, although not exclusively and not teaching classes um, that I'll be presenting in a uh, few slides are Jonathan Stewart and Arturo Tassaroglu. So those are the people. And to learn from them, you take the courses. Um, and so UCLA has many graduate level courses in transportation planning, policy, and engineering. Uh, most of these are housed um, in the urban planning department, although there's an expanding menu of courses in civil and environmental engineering. So these courses are all on that uh, website. I, um, sent you, but I'll uh, mention the titles um, as they're on the slide. So transportation, land use, and urban form is a great class where one learns about essentially sprawl and, and what led to sprawl, uh, but also alternatives to sprawl. Uh, transportation, land use, parking is a class that's taught by Donald Shoup and is the only graduate class that we I think know of uh, that's exclusively on the subject of parking. Transportation and land use, transportation and urban design studio. Um, this allows students to apply design skills to uh, transportation problems. Bicycle and pedestrian planning. Shared mobility policy and planning. Transportation economics, finance and policy transportation and economic outcomes, and transportation and environmental issues. So pretty much any aspect of transportation policy and planning is covered uh, through these eight courses. In the civil and environmental engineering department, there are two undergraduate courses. Um, that is the introduction to transportation engineering and transportation engineering systems. Uh, operations and control. So these are upper division courses typically taken by students in their final years as an undergraduate. Um, they are also um, frequently, uh, we have uh, master students from the Luskin School who enroll in those courses. And then uh, there are two new graduate level courses, uh, transportation systems analysis and intelligent transportation systems. Okay, so those are your opportunities um, to, to learn at UCLA. And so, so far, everything that I've discussed, or pretty much everything, the, the faculty and the courses are housed in the academic departments. And so um, what we do as an institute that works across multiple disciplines is we help support students across those departments in some of the following ways. Um, and so prior to acceptance, um, or at acceptance, the Institute of Transportation Studies provides uh, financial aid to incoming students. Um, so those um, that are um, applying to the MERP or MPP program, so check the box and complete the supplemental prompt at the time of their application. And those applying to other graduate programs should coordinate with their advisor about their options. Um, the student support for those in the program includes invitations to the events, uh, graduate student researcher or teaching assistant ap appointments. We'll talk more about GSR opportunities, uh, support for student clubs like uh, WTS, and connections to practice um, through our alumni network and network of those attending our multiple uh, events each year. And then um, we provide assistance, additional financial aid, including a guide to external scholarships, um, a capstone fellowship for students producing uh, research-based work in their final year of the program, and uh, travel grants to present uh, research-based work at conferences. Yes, and then in the final year of the program, um, we support students with project ideas uh, a dissertation year fellowship for those completing a doctoral degree, a capstone fellowship for those completing a capstone as part of their master's program, graduate research grants for direct research expenses associated with uh, student initiated research and capstone prizes. So um, we reward work uh, that's very good. 
And so these capstone uh, projects are available to students who are studying um, at the master's level in the urban planning and public policy programs. And they're um, a differentiator for UCLA in particular. They're uncommon in urban planning master's programs. They offer an opportunity to work uh, on an in-depth project with an external client. And these uh, projects help students build out a portfolio um, and experience that they can talk about in interviews. And um, all of our students are excellent. Uh, and many of those students are also winning awards. And so ITS helps um, along with all of the other research centers in the Luskin School of Public Affairs by using our vast email lists and networks to solicit project ideas that students um, can choose from and reach out to clients. And so um, rather than a student needing to build a personal network and, and find uh, project ideas through maybe an internship, um, we have over 100 project ideas, not all related to transportation, but most uh, that students can look at and connect with potential clients. And um, that has really, I think, improved the fit between the students and their clients and the projects. So some recent examples of projects which have won um, awards, the Capstone Prize Awards from the Institute of Transportation Studies here at UCLA, a project by Shelley Kwan, who is a MERP graduate in 2021 on California government screening maps um, with the California Air Resources Board as her client and uh, Professor Pavel Lankinen from Urban Planning as her advisor. And essentially this project involved comparing several different maps that were used in planning related decision-making in California. So a healthy places index, opportunity areas, priority populations map and the Cal Enviro screen um, communities to understand areas of overlap and potential for uh, um, streamlining uh, between the different maps, uh, priority areas. Um, these maps are all often used to target assistance um, to help local uh, projects uh, that will help meet the state's ambitious climate goals. Um, and um, uh, Shelley found a number of findings uh, that are relevant to uh, the Air Resources Board and reconsidering how it may use these maps. In 2021, this year, uh, we launched um, and raised funds from alumni for the Transportation Equity and Justice Capstone Prize. And uh, Jane Vidicharon was the first student to win that prize. Uh, she conducted a comprehensive review of SCAG's planning and funding programs through an equity lens to take on the thorny question, how can SCAG allocate its various streams of funding to best address inequities. Uh, this was done for the Southern California Association of Governments, uh, known colloquially as SCAG, and uh, also with advisor Pablo Monkinen. And so these are two projects that students were able to work on with real public sector clients on very important problems of transportation planning um, and, and equity in the state of California. And as a master's student, their work was able to actually have uh, an impact on um, what these public agencies will be doing uh, to address. And so I'm gonna take a short break and let a third student who won an award uh, talk about his project. Okay, I do not think that audio is working, so let me fix that. All right, so um, I assume that none of you could hear that because I couldn't. Um, but this is uh, Sam Speroni, who was a MERP candidate, uh, received his MERP, and um, is now a PhD student. 
And he won a national award from the Council on University Transportation Centers for the best uh, project. And that was with the client Hop, Skip, Drive. And he studied how Hop, Skip, Drive is connecting foster youth with the school where they have um, started the school year. So if somebody is in the foster youth system, they are very uh, vulnerable um, and often can have um, unstable living situations. And the hop, skip, drive, which is essentially a TNC uh, for youth, um, uh, struck a contract with Los Angeles County to bring foster youth so that even if they moved, they could still go to the same school, have the same teacher, have the same peer group. And so he studied uh, how efficient uh, that routing uh, of the students was versus public transportation. And we have that posted, I believe, to some of our uh, channels. And so our students uh, have multiple successes and they win uh, national awards um, from uh, lots of external organizations. And so if you come here, you can do research with us. I think I mentioned that we have a, um, a resume drop available to all students. Um, what I wanted to show you is what that ends up looking like. So uh, Natalie shared a little bit about the research she's been doing, but we had a major report on transit ridership trends in the Bay Area led by Professor Taylor as the per principal investigator. And what ended up happening is several of the co-authors for this report are uh, students. So two are PhD students and one was a master's student who is now working as a transportation planner for SFMTA on accessibility issues. And so understanding changing ridership dynamics in the Bay Area is something that's very useful for somebody who is doing that. Um, and so graduate student researchers get to work closely with faculty, research staff, and PhD students. Students get to be among the first research uh, to research important planning and policy problems. Uh, they, you get to advise the state and local governments on prospective policy. I think the Institute of Transportation Studies has a great relationship with policymaking in the state of California and we're often called upon um, for prospective policy work. And you get to work on cutting edge uh, transportation issues with very cool uh, data sources to be able to answer um, important questions of transportation, uh, equity, justice, planning, and engineering. And so if you wanna work with us after rolling at UCLA and getting a UCLA email address, drop your resume on the student portal and you know, we'll follow up at that time. So what do our alumni do? You come to UCLA, you decide to pick UCLA, one of our programs. Um, you have a great experience here. What do people end up doing? Um, so I spent a few minutes on LinkedIn earlier this week and just looked at what people are up to, uh, working for a variety of public agencies, consulting firms, and, um, private companies uh, that are involved in uh, the planning and delivery of transportation uh, services. And so um, many of our alumni are in Los Angeles and in California. And I don't think that that is because um, the degree is not recognized as something that's valuable outside of California. I found that people who expect to leave when they graduate end up kind of falling in love with Los Angeles and California, and then wanting to continue to work here, uh, even if they uh, came from another place. And so, um, yeah, and our 10 plus year graduates are a policy analyst with USDOT, working in the mayor's office, the mobility manager of Santa Monica, um, working on EV charging, uh, working for environmental justice and transportation justice organizations and our transportation professors everywhere. If anybody tees up a question for Brian, uh, perhaps I will. He'll talk about um, all of the various uh, transportation faculty that UCLA have trained at UCLA. And so uh, we're gonna transition into the Q&A portion, but before we do that, I wanna let you all know you can follow what we say 
on Twitter. Uh, it's a great way to interact with us and learn about events or press experiences and featured student research projects. Um, if you're not on Twitter, um, you can sign up for our email list, uh, which is available on our website. This is where you'll get that annual request for capstone ideas. Uh, many of you may have received an email because you interested you were indicated you were a prospective student when you signed up for that list. And then we have various other ways um, that people can keep in contact with us. So with that, I will move on to a questions uh, portion. And I guess I could ask other um, panelists to join me uh, and address uh, some of these questions. And so if you have questions, you can um, click a Zoom's Q&A feature. Uh, several people have posed questions already and um, you can include a question. So one of them, uh, one of those questions, and uh, Jacob, do you want to join as uh, oh, me, uh, one? Uh, I'm not able to. Uh, it says that you've disabled my ability to turn on the video. Oh, OK. Well, I will try to fix that. Maybe I joined as a uh, uh, the wrong link. Uh, maybe I joined as a participant. Well, you are a co-host. Um, there we I've go. Made you all co-hosts. So Very good. Yeah, you know, I, I set this one up myself instead of asking Whitney to do it. And so, all right. So, Jacob, did you want to address this first question uh, that you've already addressed <laughs> about um, students who are working full time and pursuing a MERP simultaneously? Yeah. Um, hi, everybody. I'm Jacob. I'm. Uh, former MERP class of 2019, uh, now a research project manager here at ITS. Um, so that's sort of um, managing research projects, doing my own research to deliver um, work for the state of California and other local and regional governments on the big transportation questions we're facing today. Um, in my experience in the MERP program, um, a lot of people work part-time, um, the internship is a requirement of the MERP program. Um, in the PhD program, it's more commonly um, working on projects as a research assistant, um, often that help you sort of further your academic work as well. Um, but full-time employment is pretty rare in the MERP program. Um, there was one person in my cohort who did it, but it was a little bit of a struggle to get classes to work out um, timing-wise. Um, but part-time employment is is not only common, it's quite expected. Um, and um, the classes sort of, there's there's evening classes, there's never class on Friday. Um, so that's a, commonly an internship day. Um, and um, research assistant jobs at UCLA can um, sometimes, if they're um, above 10 hours a week, come with um, tuition and fee support as well. Okay. Um, well, since J Jashi, since we have you on the line, uh, do you want to take a few minutes to talk about the new um, MS transportation? Oh, we just got a question related to that. Um, so, can you talk about the the new MS transportation engineering program? Oh, absolutely, sure. So, um, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, Jashi Ma, I'm a um, uh, associate professor similarly engineering so i i uh, want to so the, the the new mess in transportation engineering and phd program in uh, transportation engineering they are on both on the civil and environmental engineering department uh, with a transportation focus so the ms degree you can take actually one year to two years uh, so uh, from three quarters to six quarters you can choose a course based it usually takes three years uh, one year three quarters and you can also choose a thesis based uh, that usually takes about four quarters to six quarters depending on you know the place you complete your thesis and our courses actually covers both from a transportation engineering perspective uh, with with a focus on engineering traffic operations you know intelligence system transportation systems and so on but we also 
on our curriculum, we ask our students to take courses from urban planning because transportation engineering by itself, from my perspective, is really a, a combination planning and engineering. Um, you have to have uh, both perspectives to be a good transportation engineer. Uh, our PhD program, um, as a focus, I would say uh, for now with our the faculties we have hired and, and people like me dedicated to the engineering program and we have other faculties with a joint, joint between planning and uh, engineering. And we have other faculties, civil engineering, they also do research related to uh, transportation engineering. For example, we have faculty doing uh, resilience of infrastructure, a faculty doing infrastructure management, right? Using folks using sensors and so on. Uh, to research how to detect those uh, bridges, the defects in those bridges, and so on, to more uh, from a perspective of infrastructure management. So combine all this together, our program has been a lot of advanced technologies, how using uh, to address emerging uh, problems. So you will have you know quite a range of uh, different flavors uh, working with different faculty members, and I think. Uh, uh, you have a lot of even even under the engineering program you, you, from a research perspective, you have a lot of uh, choices. That's a uh, did I answer yeah. the questions actually? Yeah, thank you. Um, we did have a question about uh, how somebody might get in contact with transportation faculty in civil and environmental engineering who are not yet working at UCLA. Um, so of those that I presented, Tara Bills is starting January 1st, and Reagan Patterson is starting July 1st. Um, Reagan Patterson is uh, currently with the Congressional Black Caucus Foundation um, and accessible on Twitter if, if you wanted to get in contact with her. But um, Tara Bills has a UCLA email address, or will have a UCLA email address, and um, be able to field inquiries at that address starting July 1st or January 1st rather. Yeah, and, and I have all their information obviously. So if you, you want to email me, I can uh, for sure send you, We I have a, a standard uh, a slide deck that introduced to the courses and the faculty members transfer engineering. I can uh, I'd be happy to share that with you. You can certainly Google her. She's, she's at another university. And of course, since she's not being paid yet by us, we're reluctant to uh, to uh, uh, obligate her, but uh, she's certainly easy enough to find. Um, so I just wanted to say, uh, if I could, a little bit uh, uh, to pick up on what one of the things that, uh, that Juan had said is that um, uh, we're we're really proud here at UCLA that um, <clears throat> so many of the people who teach uh, transportation policy and planning around uh, the country. We're actually trained here at UCLA. So, if you uh, if you're interested in transportation policy and planning, and you are considering the University of Oregon, UC Berkeley, USC, Arizona State, uh, State University of New York at Buffalo, uh, Harvard University, Brown University, um, uh, University of Maryland, uh, University of Virginia. Clemson University or Florida State, you would be studying transportation from people who are actually trained here at UCLA. So uh, did I did I hear Rutgers? Oh, did I did I miss Rutgers? Okay, we have actually two faculty at Rutgers. Okay. Um, yeah, I guess I did miss Rutgers. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> so why uh, why go there when you can get it from the source? Right? Yeah, yeah, that's one way to think about it. They're they're pretty great people though, so I'm not going to diss any of our graduates, but. Uh, but that that uh, we we actually you know have quite a quite a great track record for uh, attracting really terrific masters and and PhD students and the fact that so many of them and actually more than any other university in the country have been trained here at UCLA. So just a little plug for uh, you know some of the influence we've had on the planning field. So our next question is: Will someone? from a non-technical background have a difficult time in transportation studies. And Brian and Joshi, I'll ask you each to address that for your respective fields, because I suspect the answer may be different. Um, <clears throat> I would say that we are uh, very open to, uh, to 
uh, students from a wide variety of backgrounds. We have had students come in with backgrounds in art history and philosophy. Now it is true that we do, uh, we do push students to get some level of quantitative competency. Uh, now, some of our students are, are very quantitatively inclined and will opt to take the more technical classes. Uh, I, I would be uh, misleading you if I said you didn't need to learn and master certain uh, sort of analytical and technical skills to do the work within transportation planning. But uh, we're equipped here to do a lot of that uh, work. And in fact, some remedial work for some students to, to get up to speed. Um, but but that's, the, uh, that's the nature of it. We look for sparkly people who are really looking to make a difference in the world and have something you know, that shows that they, they really got some, uh, something to bring to the table, a, a passion and excitement for, for the field. And we kind of feel like we can do a lot of the training uh, uh, for at least a, 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 a moderate level of, of quantitative competency once people get here. So, and that includes even um, uh, uh, sort of a, a, a two week math camp before, <laughs> before the, the, uh, the whole program starts in planning or, or policy where people can brush up on, on their skills. Uh, then we have other students uh, in planning and, and public policy who lean into a lot of the quantitative analysis and are, are learning data science and doing a, a lot of other work uh, related to their, their studies. So I would say that it runs the gamut, though you will, you will be expected to learn uh, you know, some of the basics of, of, uh, of quantitative reasoning for your, for your classes. Um, I, I think my answer to, uh, to that question is very similar to Brian's. Uh, you know, for, for us uh, as engineering uh, research, so you will need uh, quantitative uh, analysis skills. Uh, so that's why when we design a program, we put the prerequisite of those math like calculus, linear algebra. So those are the, the actually the tools we will use, and even some of the computer uh, skills that you'll do, for example, traffic simulation and so on. Um, but I would I would I would say that and, and depending on if you are a master's uh, want to join the master's program, uh, I think uh, uh, the requirement obviously uh, going to be a little lower than if you join a PhD program. Um, and even when you join a PhD program, uh, so there are depending on who you are working with, the topic you're actually working with, you may be working on the more uh, a behavior type of analysis that requires a little. Um, less computer type of skills, but if you are working on traffic simulation, that could be uh, kind of computer programming, uh, very uh, intensive type of work. So it, it also depends on what your interests are, what topic you pick you want to work with. Thank you, Joshi. So there's a quick um, question here from Hannah Shumway. Do ITS fellowships include research and or teaching appointments? Uh, sometimes they do, but often it's just direct aid for uh, tuition, and what is expected at the end is a capstone project. Um, but some of the ITS fellowships do include research or teaching, and that's rare, and but much more common for a PhD student, um, where a, a teaching or research commitment is made as part of the incoming fellowship. Um, and then we have a connect question about, um, oh, so in the PhD in urban planning program, is there a requisite for being uh, the whole, in the state the whole time during the degree? I guess, Brian, could, could somebody um, enroll in the PhD in urban planning program and spend a good deal of time doing field research in French Polynesia? Yeah, I was just going to. <laughs> going to say so uh the of course the 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 pandemic obviously threw all of these things out, out out the window but but in general for the first part of the phd program which would be essentially at least the first two years one would expect it to be in residence and, and taking classes here at at ucla uh uh that that obviously was suspended uh, uh for uh the last year and that we had students all over. But uh, <clears throat> typically when people advance to candidacy, which means that they've completed all the requirements except their doctoral dissertation, which takes place uh, at the earliest after two years and, and, and more often after three years, uh, they may <clears throat> do their research anywhere. Uh, so they may be uh, find it attractive to be working with, uh, with faculty 
here on campus, but as, as Juan mentioned, I just had a, a, a terrific student finish and he did uh, two years of field work in French Polynesia um, uh, before completing his degree. So he actually did field research um, <laughs> related to his studies and that people can go anywhere in the world to do that sort of work. Um, it, it, as well, we've had, and I've had students who advanced to candidacy, and it's not that they had to go do field research, but they had a spouse who had a job in, you know, Seattle or in New York, and that they would they would relocate and do their research and work remotely with their faculty advisors on their dissertation research. So there's two big parts of the PhD program. Um, once we're back in person, it's, uh, you, you know, you, one does need to be in residence to complete the um, the, the 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 course requirements, but after that they're they're footloose. Uh, and then I see it says uh, talk about the experience of of living in California, particularly in terms of being in a congested city. Well, as a transportation person here, there's a lot to do, uh, a lot to work on, and a lot happening. Um, <clears throat> uh, you're gonna. Uh, you're gonna have a hard time finding uh, people who aren't bigger advocates for what a terrific place LA is than than some of the people here. It's a it's a fantastic global city, incredibly diverse. I mean, the scale of the the place is just staggering. It's 19 million people in the metropolitan area. Um, it's just it's just enormous. Um, <clears throat> it has things like congestion and high housing prices that I'm not gonna uh, say that it doesn't, but it's common to very uh, very large cities. It's an incredibly exciting place to study transportation planning and engineering. And um, I think that, uh, mo as, as Juan mentioned, lots of people have this image of LA and think, oh, well, I'm not sure, you know, I'll come here and study, but then I'm going to go back to somewhere else. Many people end up surprising themselves and, uh, and staying and study. I had a, a, a student a few years ago who was <clears throat> from New York and she actually went back to work there and she said, she, you know, her friends would get together and they would start to dump on LA and she had to keep it on the down low how much she loved LA and was thinking, gosh, I wish I were back in LA, but I can't tell my New York friends this because the, they'll, uh, they'll think differently of me. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I think that LA gets a lot of converts when people come here and spend some time, so. Okay, I see a question in the chat. Yeah, I, I would say, I, on my bike ride home, I pass over a subway construction project. Um, so, and there's a lot <laughs> going on uh, in LA right now and, and near campus. Um, a question uh, from our student assistant, uh, Veronica de Santos, for Jacob. Um, and we can ask Brian to cover his ears if, your favorite class wasn't one of his, um, but what was your favorite class in the program and why? Oh, I can't pick between the two classes I took with Brian. Um, uh, I'll, uh, besides those, um, I'll give an answer that I, I think typifies the, the Merck program is actually, I really, really enjoyed the class I took with um, Joan Wing, who is in affordable housing. Uh, developer herself, many years experience in the field um, on affordable housing development, um, where the students in the class were in teams and we got a site um, and we had to basically from design to financing to um, uh, sort of the timeline of approvals for environmental review, we had to basically do all the work you would do to plan out an affordable housing development and that's a lot of work, uh, if, if there's any lesson from the class. Um, I ended up double concentrating in um, uh, community economic development and housing as well as transportation, just not because I planned to coming in, but I was also interested in housing and um, ITS research, uh, you know, is all about the fact that transportation really can't be separated from issues of land use and housing and economic development. Um, yeah, so that's that's a great class, um, Joan Wings. But um, you know, I could go on about all of the all of the transportation classes I took here as well. So what, one thing to mention about the <clears throat> the urban planning uh, and, and the MPP program is that there's kind of three strategies that students who come in uh, and pursue. Uh, one is to say, well, gosh, I really want to I, I want to study transportation. 
I'm going to take every transportation course that isn't tied down. I'm going to take all the engineering courses. I'm going to take the whole series. That that entails taking 12 or 14 classes. It's a it's a lot. Uh, and uh, the depth and breadth of coverage within transportation is 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 really significant. And so, so you know that that's one strategy. Other students will say, "Well, I kind of want a double major. I want to study transportation and urban design, or transportation and environmental policy, or transportation and uh, and and uh, you know housing and economic development." And students can do that, where they kind of balance their program and they they do what Jacob did. They complete essentially two areas and allows them to work at the intersection of those things. And the third strategy is that students will complete, uh, you know, say quite a few courses in transportation, but they'll say, I want to learn about regional economic development. I'm going to take a course in that. I want to learn about housing because I know that relates to transportation policy. I'm going to take one in that. I really need to take a little bit more in environmental policy because I know that's really important for transportation. So they sort of take an assortment of classes around their transportation curriculum to sort of round things out a little bit. And all three of them are good strategies depending on what you want to accomplish in the program. And so, uh, Students will will pursue all three of those approaches to to their studies in the in the transportation area here in the Luskin School. Okay, great. Uh, looks like that is the end of the questions and the end of time. Good job, everybody, for asking uh, right a portion then of questions for the time. Um, Professor Ma, did you have anything to add at the end? Mm -hmm. Well, thanks for asking. Now, uh, the, our engineering program is a new program. I hope that you know students can uh, choose our program. Okay, and um, yeah. So, as next steps, if you're interested in any of these programs, I would implore you to get directly connected with the academic department. Um, usually, if you find the department, they will have a link for prospective students, the application, etc. And that is your next step um, after you've chosen which program or programs you may be interested in pursuing at UCLA. And so thank you everyone for joining and uh, happy applying and happy studies. Goodbye. Bye-bye.